Hello. So better late than never, this is going to be part two of me recommending books to you guys. You saw the first part with my sister where she was helping me out with some of the romance recommendations that you guys wanted. So a while back on the community tab, I asked you guys to leave me different tropes or things that you wanted book recommendations for. You guys came up with some great prompts. So here I am trying my best to answer those for you guys today. There were definitely a couple repeated ones, some things you guys all wanted recommendations for, and then there was only one that you won't see in this that is just out of my realm. I could not find a book for. It was just something I'd never read, so I didn't include it. I'm so sorry if that was you. Good luck on your search for finding that book. But let's just begin. We've got quite a few to get through. So first you guys were looking for a short fantasy book if you didn't have a lot of time to devote to like a long book or series. I have one young adult and one adult recommendation for you. So this one is pretty widely known, but for a young adult recommendation, An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson was a young adult book that I really enjoyed and it's super short. It's less than 300 pages as you can tell. And the perks are you get a gorgeous cover if you read it and want to physically buy it. This involves Faye and a girl who's an artist and she's working with her first royal patron. And the main character creates this portrait of him that shows mortal sorrow in his eyes, which is like a big no-no and he can lose the throne over it. So the whole ordeal goes from there and it's really about the relationship between the two of them. And I thought it was really beautiful and packed a punch for the 300 pages that it is. And next I have a, an adult book I've talked about a couple times and that is An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Williams. This book is set in New York City and every 20 years, all of these magical houses compete against one another by selecting a champion to compete in these magical duels. And I don't wanna to say too much more than that, but this is a fantastic read. And this is just over 300 pages, so you definitely can make time for either of these reads. Then you guys wanted, you guys all wanted underrated fantasy book recommendations. And this is a little challenging because underrated to me could not be underrated to you. It just depends on like which circle of booktube or the book community in general that we're in because in the circle that I follow, these books might not be mentioned as much as I think they should be, but in your circle, they might be talked about all the time. So that's kind of hard. The first one I'm gonna go with is definitely mentioned frequently, but doesn't get enough praise in my opinion. And that is The Shadow of What Was Lost, book one in the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. I love this trilogy. I think it's extremely underrated. I think it will appeal to a very wide range of readers. It has a lot of great elements to it with the magic and the world building and time traveling and just different things that so many people love to read in their fantasy stories. It's not perfect and I don't think it's like quite on par with maybe Sanderson or Brent Weeks and things like that but it's a solid fantasy read and I don't know why it's not talked about more because it is very detailed. There's a lot of intricacies and minor details that went into creating this overall plot and the reveals and I love it. Then we have a book that I just discovered this year that I see being talked about here and there but not enough and that is The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. This is a fantasy sci-fi horror book and it deals with this God who creates these children to be catalogs and each of them has a different knowledge base and set that they are in charge of and they are like all knowing in these areas. There's a lot of conflict between the siblings that you'd call them and there's again like a time traveling aspect almost. I love this book so much. It's very weird and not for everyone but it is underrated. I just think it's too good for how much it's talked about and I wish more people would read it. Then we have a self-published young adult romance fantasy book that I've discussed a lot on the channel, but it's so underrated. And I know those of you that have picked it up and read it, from the feedback I've gotten, most of you guys have loved it as well. So if you enjoy young adult novels and if you like romance in your fantasy, I think you'll love The Raven and the Dove by Caitlin Davis. I'm just gonna, first of all, look at this cover. The second one just came out and I'm, I'm gonna be reading it really soon. I just wanna read this too because I think it describes it better than I'll jumble it up and ruin it. Four fates collide in this avian-inspired epic fantasy retelling of Tristan and Isolde, a princess longing to be free, a bastard aching to belong. Fate brought them together, now destiny will tear them apart. Three shocking betrayals, two star-crossed lovers, 
one unfortunate journey. If you like fierce heroines, brooding heroes, forbidden romance, and action-packed magical adventures with twists you'll never see coming, don't miss The Raven and the Dove. Um, that just sums it up perfectly. It is very romance heavy. That is the main part of this book because they're going through this courting process of trying to find a mate, etc. But there's a bigger scope of the world and magic that's very interesting and I think it's underrated. It's not gonna be for everyone. It's a little tropey but it was a good read for me. I'm doing so many underrated recommendations because you guys all asked for them. I should just do an entire video. Now I'm probably ruining that video idea. Who cares, it's fine. The 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin, book one in the Inheritance Trilogy, is so under talked about in my opinion because everyone just talks about her Broken Earth Trilogy. This is far better in my opinion. I love it way more than I love Broken Earth. I don't even really have a good pitch for the synopsis for this. The, the cover says, gods and mortals, power and love, death and revenge. She will inherit them all. That's all you need to know. You can't go wrong with this book. I haven't heard anyone say they dislike it. Maybe that's not true, but I love it so much. I'm so biased. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I don't know why people don't talk about it more. One more, we have The Emperor's Blades by Brian Stavely. I've talked about this at length on my channel before. It's a trilogy, the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. I adore it. It deals with three siblings that are very different from one another and what happens when the king is killed and sort of the overthrowing of power in this kingdom. We have a, a soldier type warrior. We have the one sister who stays in the palace and deals with more of the stuff in the kingdom. And then we have a monk. Those are the three siblings. I love it. Don't know why it doesn't get more talk and attention. And last but not least, we have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Now this is a young adult series. The fourth book is coming out next year. She took quite a long break to write Priory in the meantime, but this is the same author as Priory of the Orange Tree. And I first read this series by her, which is why I knew I would love Priory so much. So this deals with characters who are clairvoyant and it's a criminal offense to practice that. So there's like this underground ring and society of people. I don't, there's so much this book, I can't even get into it. It does have like paranormal aspects because of the clairvoyancy. It deals with somebody trying to live a double life. It deals with somebody be ta being taken away as basically like a prisoner slave to this world that like nobody even knows exists. It's a great read and I really think I'm going to reread the series. If not, I will just do summaries, but I love them so much, the three that are out, that I can't wait to pick up the fourth book. And I think so many more people would love this if they picked it up. Okay, on to the next question. I'm not gonna go too much into this one because I do have a video planned very soon, and it is for standalone fantasy books, and I am making my list of favorite standalone fantasy and sci-fi. But just to name a couple that you guys probably already know because you hear me talk about them 24 seven. Some of my favorite books of all time are standalones. The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Groton. It's a King Lear retelling and we're dealing with siblings fighting for power in a really cool elemental earthy witchy style magic. Love this to death. And two more obvious favorites, The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Our main character discovers a book that leads him to discover this entire other world that he didn't know existed and deals with some darker themes and topics as well as portal fantasies. You know this is my favorite book of all time. And another favorite book of all time, Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This deals with the East and West at war with one another. It deals with dragons. It deals with betrayal and trying to fight for power. It deals with really cool magic, a lot of traveling, a huge world. You can't go wrong with this book. I adore it so much. Then you guys asked for hard magic systems that aren't Brent Weeks or Brandon Sanderson, which makes it a little tricky because I don't prefer hard magic systems. I also am not like knowledgeable enough about this kind of thing to even totally determine what's hard magic and what's not. I like did a little research and I'm not sure if one of my answers fits or not, but oh well. You guys will probably tell me both of these are not. But the first thing that comes to mind for me is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I've read this and the sequel Shorefall. The third book's not out yet. I think it's gonna be a quartet, I'm not sure. But this deals with the magic of scribing and it's basically inscribing on objects to make them sentient and obey what you tell them to do. It's like tricking an object into believing something so that it performs a certain task. 
it's so interesting. It's so well explained and developed upon more in book two. It's very unique. There's a similar thing in 10 Arrows of Iron by Sam Sykes, which is book two to Seven Blades in Black. So that I guess could be similar. I'm not sure that borders may be on hard magic, but I think this would be hard magic. And it's very, very interesting, super unique. And I love what the author is doing. I can't wait to continue this series. And then this one, I'm probably totally wrong. I don't know, but this is more of a hard magic system to me than soft magic. And that's the Greenbone Saga, which begins with Jade City by Fonda Lee. One of my favorite fantasy series that's ongoing right now. I'm obsessed with it. But the reason I say this is hard magic is because we really learn how the Greenbone Warriors and the people within this world use Jade to enhance their powers. And it's very specific and detailed. And it's not like a lot of it just left to the unknown. So that's why I think it's more like hard magic. I could be crazy, pick this book up regardless. Great magic, great family story. So even if it's not technically hard magic, it's still worth reading. Then you guys wanted some non-Western based fantasies, which is pretty easy. Well, I guess it's becoming more and more common, which is phenomenal. We can use way more inspiration from different places in the world for our fantasy stories. And I prefer that because I'm tired of reading the same things over and over again too. I love Asian inspired fantasies or Middle Eastern inspired fantasies. I just love learning about the different cultures or the different mythology that is part of this culture that we didn't experience growing up and the tales that we've heard. So one Middle Eastern inspired fantasy, I think it's just a duology and that is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. This was really enjoyable. It deals with descendants of desert spirits and a lot of magic revolving around that. Magic is a huge part of this book. It is a little bit romance heavy for my taste, which is why I haven't read the sequel yet, but it also deals with manipulating the dreams of gods to alter the shape of the world, things like that. So this is a Middle Eastern fantasy that I highly recommend. If that sounds interesting to you, definitely worth the read. Another duology would be the Dream Blood duology by N.K. Jemisin. This is an Egyptian inspired fantasy world that has some of the most unique magic world building, history lore. I love it so much. It deals with people who are gatherers and use like narcomancy to gather healing powers from people's dreams and kill those who are corrupt. It is a pretty dark world and deals with a lot of heavy topics. But like I said, one of the most unique worlds that I've read from, I found it so interesting the entire time. And it just really stands apart from a lot of the other fantasy that I read. Another one is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, the Devabad trilogy. It begins in Egypt as well. And it is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy. Once again, we deal with the Jinn. This book incorporates so much of the mythology from that part of the world. It's so beautiful and unique. We see all types of like races and, and people that are not present in Western fantasy and I adore it. It's also very beautifully written. The descriptions are very vivid and you feel like you're always picturing what's going on, which helps because I am more unfamiliar with this type of mythology in fantasy. So I highly recommend this trilogy. I just finished it up this year and I really enjoyed reading it. And lastly, I'll go with The Wolf of Orin Yarrow, which is book one in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen by K.S. Veloso. I really loved this. First of all, this cover is beautiful. I really need to pick up the sequel, which has an equally beautiful cover, but this Asian inspired fantasy. We're dealing with our main character, the queen, who's really hated by her people. It also deals with an arranged marriage and the man left years and years and years later. He wants to arrange this me meeting. There's an assassination attempt and things get more complicated from then. So this is a really unique fantasy book that deals with a really strong character. Like she's called the bitch queen, but she also is very compassionate and she's so multidimensional that she has more than just that harshness to her. She's also a mother and loving and understanding and caring. And I think her character really makes this book. So I would check out this series if you haven't as well. I think this was originally self-published 
and then Orbit picked it up. Next, you asked for middle grade recommendations or adult fantasy or sci-fi recommendations for somebody just getting back into reading again. And I always recommend Keeper of the Lost Cities first for middle grade recommendations. I can't find my hardcover set right now, so this will have to do. It's such a great read. It is so great. I've read eight books so far, I believe, in the series. And we're watching as the years pass, these characters grow up and mature and deal with, deal with hard things in life and learning life lessons and growing with one another. It's so well done. Adults can totally enjoy the series, but it still has that aspect where it's definitely good for the younger audience to be learning important things about life. It's also very entertaining and fast to read, and I think that anyone would enjoy it. For an adult recommendation for just getting back into reading, I would recommend the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. It starts with A Darker Shade of Magic. This has one of my favorite characters of all time in it, Lila Bard. She's very polarizing. Some people don't love her. I personally adore her. I think this is an excellent trilogy. It's, it's very readable for people who are just getting back into it. It's not too dense and overly complex where you'll feel weighed down because when I think of beginner fantasy, if it's been a while from reading, I think that you just want something easy to get through and fun, but there really is a lot to it and it's a fun plot and great characters and I like the magic, so you can't go wrong starting here in my opinion. Then you guys wanted military fantasy recommendations, which is so out of my realm. It's something that I really enjoy sometimes and not so much other times. I don't have many for you. I have so many books on my backlist TBR. I'll link those videos so that you can check them out there. But I have two videos talking about backlist fantasy that I wanna read and a ton of those books do fall into the military fantasy category subgenre. But two that I know of for sure, the first one is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is very widely known and talked about, so I'm sure you've already heard about this. I'm sure you already know that this is military fantasy. Don't get your hopes up for a lot of dragons in this book but we're mostly focused on a revenge plot and a lot of military type training and sparring and battling and training and training and training. So if you like that, you might like this. And I believe that The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang would also be considered military fantasy. Now this is one that I do love. Rin is one of my favorite characters again. And it begins in like a school setting and it deals with shamanism and like an underdog story, somebody rising up from the bottom. We definitely have a theme of revenge within this series as well. The third one comes out very soon. I'm guessing you've already heard of both of these, so I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you, but hopefully I will before too long. Oh, one more that I forgot is Temeraire, book one, His, His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. This was not a hit for me either. This was just like middle of the road, good to where I can recommend it, but I think the military combat aspect of this just kind of lost me, so it might be one that you enjoy. It says, aerial combat brings a thrilling new dimension to the Napoleonic Wars as valiant warriors rise to Britain's defense by taking to the skies, not aboard aircraft, but atop the mighty backs of fighting dragons, which sounds wonderful, but didn't quite do it for me. I was expecting more, but it was a decent read. Next, you guys wanted steampunk recommendations, which like, so do I. I realized I've read like almost no steampunk. When I was looking at my list of books, trying to look at the categories of each on Goodreads to see which ones could possibly categorize as steampunk, two came up, two of which I really strongly disliked. However, I've heard a lot of praise from these from other people. So maybe you'll enjoy them more than I do. They are probably two of my least favorite books I've ever read in saying that. The first one is The Aeronauts Windlass by Jim Butcher, which I believe it's book one in like a series. And I really think there's only one book out. I don't know. Anyways, how do I talk? How do I recommend you a book that I dislike? We have like these airships and there's fighting going on. So there are battle scenes that take place on these airships, but there's also just in my opinion, some annoying characters, some real annoying characters and talking cats, which like works perfect for me and never night in this book. I hated it. So I've heard praise to each their own. Pick it up if it sounds interesting. And then we have Sendlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft, which is once again, one of my least favorite books ever. And it's not the book, it's me. But we have like a retake on Dante's Inferno. Basically this guy and his wife go to this tower for their honeymoon and he loses his wife and he has to try to go through this tower to find her. And there's some twists and turns, secrets being kept. It was a miserable time reading it to me. But so many people love this series. So I can still recommend it for those who find the concept interesting. I just could not have cared less about what was going on whatsoever. I didn't get any enjoyment 
out of it, but some people liked reading on the different levels and floors, like what was going on and taking place. And it's just a very different type of fantasy story. So you might enjoy it more than I did. Then you guys wanted unlikable main characters or morally gray characters, which honey, that is all I care about in life. <laughs> Have you heard of this baby? First law, Jabber Crombie, the blade itself. Start here, please. This is everything you need when it comes to morally gray characters. I'm obsessed. If you watch my channel and don't know my love for First Law or Joe Abercrombie yet, this must be your first video. And you have nine books in the First Law universe to read. So like that'll keep you occupied for a while. And then we have A Game of Thrones, book one in the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. I love this series a lot because of the morally gray characters. Tyrion is probably my favorite character in the book because he is so morally gray. You love him and he's a good character, but he does a lot of bad things. So this is one of the first books that comes to mind when I think of morally gray characters. Then we also have Sal from Seven Blades in Black by Sam Sykes. She is very morally gray. She wants to do the right thing. She wants to care about the people she loves in her life. I think a lot of people think her character is unlikable because she will step on anyone it takes to get her revenge and what she wants. So she definitely comes to mind when I think of unlikable characters, but she is a favorite character of all time for me. I think I'll stop there, but let me know if you guys would like to see an entire video devoted to unlikable characters or morally great characters. Then you guys wanted book recommendations that involve epic magic battles. And one comes to mind immediately. I'm sure you guys already know. And that is Lightbringer, which begins with The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. Brent Weeks is a favorite author of mine. I absolutely adore this series. We deal with a magic system, which involves drafting of different colors. So there's a prism who can draft all of the colors and is in power for a certain amount of time. There are, is it polychromes? Somebody who can draft more than two colors, somebody, people can draft more than that. It's one of the most interesting magic systems that I've ever read and I adore it and I don't usually love hard magic systems, so that says a lot. But this series in a whole has some really cool battle scenes that I absolutely adore and I think it would be hard to find some better than this. And then I have to go with the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan because the farther I get into it, the more cool battle scenes or just epic scenes there are that involve huge displays of magic. And some of the descriptions that Jordan gives us throughout these battles are just amazing. And I love picturing what he's doing. It feels so epic and grand to me at times that I absolutely love it. And I will always look forward to the endings of his books because you know something epic is going to happen. And so definitely pick this up if you haven't. What are you doing? Next, you guys asked where to start with Brandon Sanderson. So I probably have a little bit different of opinion on this than most people because while I did put out a video last year saying that Brandon Sanderson was one of my favorite authors of all time, I've read a lot since then and really grown to learn and understand my reading tastes and preferences and a lot has changed. Brandon Sanderson was probably one of the first adult fantasy authors that I began reading and his work is phenomenal, but it's just not my favorite. So Brandon Sanderson is not a favorite author of mine. So I like some of the less popular books best. I would absolutely say to read Warbreaker first. Warbreaker is my favorite Brandon Sanderson book. And I would even say also you could read Elantris first. Some people that read Elantris first might be put off because I guess some people don't love it. I think it's fantastic, but this is so funny. Amazing Magic deals with using breaths and colors to draw from in order to use magic. And there's a sister, like sibling relationship, a girl who's kind of like undercover. It's just a great time. And I really, really love this book, which leads me to the next recommendation. You guys asked where to go after Warbreaker. I can't really think of a lot of books that are really similar to Warbreaker itself. I would say if you liked Warbreaker, there's a good chance you'll like Prior of the Orange Tree. For some reason, those just feel similar to me. Not for any specific reason, I just think you'll like it. But as far as after reading Warbreaker, if that's where you began with Sanderson, I think that you'd be great to begin with Mistborn because it is such a contained trilogy. Obviously there are more, I know, throw me all the hate, but I prefer Mistborn Era 2 to Mistborn Era 1 by 
far, and I think you'll enjoy those novels as well, but I think you'd be fine jumping right into Mistborn. I don't know enough about like Cosmere reading order, this or that, because I, I frankly don't care and I'm not interested in it. So I'm not the person to go to. Probably check out like Elliot Brooks' channel if you want a lot of information on Brandon Sanderson and reading order, because it's just not for me. Someone very specifically wanted books involving the use of wands and wand magic. The Black Witch by Lori Forrest, which I think the third and final book, is it the final book? I don't know, the third one just came out recently. I still have to read it, I'm on the waiting list. This absolutely uses wand magic and this is a young adult fantasy series that I love. It deals with a magical school setting and topics of racism. And I think this is a really underrated fantasy series that I adore. It's one of the young adult series that I still want to actively read. So there's definitely ones in this. And then if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first year and I can't find my copy anywhere in my mess of books. I can't wait to move and have my bookshelves till my house is built. Anyways, I'll try to insert a picture. This definitely deals with a magical school setting and I'm 99% sure it involves the use of wands. So you could give that a try. It was very tropey. It's exactly what you would expect for a young adult magic school novel, but it was good. It was entertaining. I ate it right up. Then you just said sci-fi. So sci-fi recommendations. Three ones I always give. The Humans by Matt Haig. I adore this. You guys will have just seen this if you watch my get to know the sci-fi reader tag. It deals with like first contact with aliens, this alien coming to earth to kill someone after realizing that we've solved Raymond's, Raymond's hypothesis, however you say that. And it's very sarcastic, very funny, but also very emotional and explores deeper topics as well. You guys have to know by now, Red Rising is an all time favorite sci-fi story. I don't know who could pick up this book and not enjoy it. And it just gets better and better as you go on. Pierce Brown's writing gets even better. It's already phenomenal, but it's just like impeccable by the end. And I didn't really think that book needed an introduction. I think most people know what it's about. And if you're looking to start for, with some classic sci-fi, pick up the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. It's just so good and thought provoking. I am so thrilled there's going to be an adaptation. I didn't know that that it was like in the works. I don't know, I'm, I'm so excited for it. Go into it knowing it's a very dry writing style and very different classic sci-fi is not for everyone, but give this a try. And if you're not sold when you start this, start with maybe um, Caves of Steel or iRobot. His robot series is great as well. Pick up any Asimov. And last but not least, you guys asked for urban fantasy recommendations, which is not my realm whatsoever. This is more like urban fantasy to me, Crescent City, book one in House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I don't think I'm continuing with this. I know I rated it very well on the channel, just lost interest. There's modern technology and cars and cell phones and all that type of things where to me it feels like urban fantasy, even though it's not set on earth. It figures that at the end of the video, I finally find the one book. So I'm not gonna insert a picture. Here is First Year, The Black Mage Book One by Rachel E. Carter. I didn't continue. I think it's a self-published because like it's a huge, strange times book. But here's the book I was mentioning before for wand magic. And lastly, for urban fantasy, it's gotta be New York. This book takes place. That's The Magicians by Lev Grossman, a favorite book of all time for me as a standalone book. It deals with like a magical school setting and it kind of goes back and forth between worlds. I adore this book so much. If you've watched the TV show, it's really different than that. So I wouldn't base your opinion on that alone. I actually couldn't watch it because it was so different and I disliked it, but I love the book. It is a favorite of mine. So maybe give this a try. All right, you guys, I've made it. We're done. We finished. I would love to do this again. Sorry, this took so long to get back to you guys. This was months ago, but with summer and traveling and the move going on and selling my house and building a house, I just didn't have the energy to put time and thought into these recommendations. So hopefully you guys um, found some new books to pick up. Let me know what your recommendations would be for any of these prompts as well. I would love to hear if you guys thought of better ideas than I did. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.